So on my way here to beautiful Bayreuth, I took a pilgrimage to the Mainz and the Gutenberg Museum. The old Gutenberg, not your new Gutenberg, the, the other one, <laughs> the real one. And, and I want to come and start there with some context of where I think we are um, and a timeline. So Gutenberg invented movable type after the Chinese and Koreans too, but he, but he made it popular in 1450. So this is 1450, all right? It took a century and a half till 1605 before anyone thought to invent a newspaper. We get to the 1800s before the steam engine makes the newspaper and printing mass. We get to 1950 when television comes along and really starts ruining life. And we get to 1994, hello. hello. Uh, right here by the flute is 1994 and that's when the commercial web was released. Right? That is a very long time. And I would argue, I will soon argue that Gutenberg's era is soon to end, but it's still here. And my point is, we don't know what the fuck the internet is yet. It is too soon to give up. It is too soon to imagine. Because let me go back here to 1450. We are 24 years away from the creation of the commercial web in 1994. That means we are at the year 1474 in Gutenberg time. Martin Luther was not born until 1483. He didn't post his theses until 1517. He wasn't a bestseller until the 1520s. We don't know what the fuck the internet is yet. So it's too soon to panic. So my message to you is chill. It'll be okay. Um, in doing some research on Gutenberg, I read Elizabeth Eisenstein, who's a key scholar of Gutenberg, and she talks about the early reaction to movable type and books, and some of it was happy as could be, but some of it was very worried. Um, there was fear of an information overload, too many books. There was talk of a new age of barbarity. There was talk of unlearning. Erasmus worried that uh, our minds were too flighty. There was talk of there are too much unrestrained discursivity. I had to look that up too. What that means is nobody shuts up anymore. They called books paper bullets, dangerous things. The church worried about, and I quote, ink squittering treacherous pamphlets. Well, all of that should sound familiar to you because haven't we heard that, oh my God, there's too much information. Nobody shuts up. We're being mean to each other. The, the internet is making us stupid. Um, and the internet is dangerous. So the reactions are very similar. The timeline, I would argue, is very similar. I could be wrong, but I'm too old to know. We have met the problem, and guess who? It's us. The problem is not technology. The problem is human behavior on technology. The problem is us. And that's what Schlecky says to a great extent, but I'm gonna, where I'm going to disagree here is I think it's a very small number of us. As I look around this room, I see no assholes. I see no trolls, right? You're all nice people. It's somebody else who's screwing up the internet and society. And yes, they are, right? There are three kinds of bad guys, economically motivated, psychologically motivated, that is to say trolls, and politically motivated, which these days means Russians and Trump, <laughs> right? And they're there and they're screwing things up, I grant that, but it's a small number and we can figure out what to do about this. And most of the uses of the internet, most of the uses of social media are good. We have to keep that in mind. Without social media, we would not have had Black Lives Matter. It would not have existed because American, African Americans were never covered in mainstream media. We would not have had Me Too because too many editors of newspapers look like me, old white men. We would not have had the Parkland students after the shooting finally making progress in America against our stupidity about guns. This was all possible because of social media. And at an individual level, I wrote about my prostate cancer on social media. My German friends thought I was nuts because I was talking, telling the world about my malfunctioning penis. You cannot get more public than that. 
but I got tremendous good out of it. I, I shared with people who, who also got themselves tested. I learned what was going to happen. I teach other people what's going to happen because of social media. I think that the main thing we're going to disagree about is that I think that rather than believing that we are all cows or sheep or lemmings, pick your animal, who are being led by the nose by algorithms, no. We have more agency than that. We have more power than that. We have more intelligence than that. We are not suddenly a society that built Bayreuth, Wagner, everything here, and now suddenly we're a bunch of idiot cows? No. No, we're smarter than that. We're better than that. Um, Yasha Munk, a German scholar who's now at Harvard, sorry we stole him away, um, said social media closes the technological gap between insiders and outsiders. And the problem in great measure is the insiders, the elite, are not happy about hearing these new voices. And they're getting very nervous. And I fear their fear. I'm afraid we're heading toward a moral panic. The problem is we have to define the problem. We have to define the harm. We have to have real evidence. Too much of what we have right now is people saying, oh my God, bad things could happen. Yes, bad things can always happen. We have to recognize very importantly that when you get toward moral panic, what you're really doing is you're trying to find one bad guy and blame all of society's problems on that bad guy. It's all the internet's fault. That's why we have Trump. That's why we have all this mess. No. And let me as a member of media here at a conference with media people stand here in confession. It's our fault too. Especially in America, it was media that polarized us. It was media that set red versus blue, black versus white, 99% versus 1%. And that allowed an atmosphere that allowed Trump and company to come along and also set insider versus outsider, known versus stranger. Media did that. Media also created the business model that is now used by Facebook and by Google, which is an advertising basis, an attention marketplace. So it was media that invented this structure and led inevitably to cats and Kardashians. Right? If you are desperate for attention, what do you do? You sensationalize. Right? We have the New York Post, you have built. We also, however, have Fox News. And I have to tell you that I've watched my own dear, beloved, intelligent, wonderful, nice parents and relatives be brainwashed by Fox News, utterly changed. Because in America, in America, we in liberal media, and I'm liberal and I'm in media, left no room for conservative media. We left no opportunity there. So we in media deserve blame. Do the platforms deserve blame? Yes. Should they do more? Yes. But what? What did they do wrong? I'm among those who believe strongly in optimism, and I believed in openness. The internet was open. It allowed everything to happen. Finally, the voices we could never hear in a democracy were heard. Well, great, but it also meant the platforms could be manipulated by bad actors. That's absolutely true. So they should have been a little more skeptical and cynical. They should have anticipated the manipulation better. Um, today, they should be more transparent, by far, about what they do and how they do it. They should offer uh, some measure of uh, due process when they make decisions. They should be more responsive. They should be more local. Problem when you deal with Rohingya and you have people in Silicon Valley dealing with that, they don't know enough. They have to find locals who understand the language, the people, the conflicts. When you are worldwide, you gain a responsibility. I also want them to design for community over conversation. Facebook now is heading toward valuing what they say is um, meaningful interactions between people. Well, I fear we might go from clickbait to comment bait, where as long as people are talking, it's a great thing, right? And I know how I can get people talking. I can say insulting things. So I think Facebook has to become much more mature in its view of community. A community is not a bunch of people who talk. A community is people who gather together because they share needs, they share goals, they want to do things together. They want to share with each other. I also think that we in media have to help the platforms. 
In full disclosure, I have at my university accepted money from Facebook, but I am independent of Facebook, uh, as well as Craig Newmark, the Ford Foundation, and others. And I'm now starting to work on a new project trying to define the signals of quality news so that the platforms can give it more attention and so that advertisers can give it more support. Now, should it be government that does something? Uh, I'm an American, I'm a little worried about that. Because I think that there are unintended consequences that come, and given the government we have right now, I don't want them to get anywhere near my internet. And I'm going to suggest that much of the regulation we've seen in Europe has been well-intentioned, absolutely, but has unintended consequences. We heard this morning Dorothe Baer talk about the Leistungsschutzrecht, which is a complicated and controversial topic in this room with this company, right? Um, I'm among those who, who worry that the Leistungsschutzrecht uh, takes away the free structure of the net. It led to the link tax in Spain, and Google News had to pull out of Spain, and now it leads to new copyright regulations being contemplated in the EU, and I'm very grateful that Articles 11 and 13 were just slowed down so we can have a sane discussion about this. You have the right to be forgotten, which privacy is important, I agree with that, but I think we've already seen some impact from that. I tried to go to the Los Angeles Times today from my phone here, I can't because American publishers have cut off European users entirely, because frankly, you're not worth their time and money. That's a balkanized web, that worries me. That's an unintended consequence. You have um, the right to be forgotten. Did I just say right to be forgotten? I meant, I meant GDPR. Now I mean right to be forgotten. Much of this regulation tries to take power away from Google and Facebook. It ends up giving them power. So right to be forgotten, now Google's in charge of saying what can and cannot be remembered in society. I find that worrisome too. The Netz des Gay here in Germany has an impact on satire. I don't know if you're, if you're going to get taken down from Facebook because, pe because somebody can't understand that you're making a joke about a controversial topic. Consider this. Facebook is hiring 20,000 people because we have demanded that they have to do something about taking that shit down. And fine, I agree. But consider for comparison. It's a bad comparison, but I'll make it anyway. Facebook has 20,000 people trying to pick shit. Meanwhile, in the United States, on newspapers, we have fewer than 30,000 journalists. What does that say about our allocation of resources in society? What it says is we're panicking. We're trying to throw all these resources into trying to play whack-a-mole with these bad guys when we should be paying attention to quality and putting resources behind quality. So, I'll end here. My message is chill. Chill. Relax. Um, have patience. Give this time, right? It's a long way from 1450 to today. It's a long way from 1994 and the beginning of the internet to whatever it's going to be. And here we are in a room filled, I hope still, with students, with the future. I have faith in you, that you will figure this out You'll fix what we're screwing up. You'll find the opportunities that exist. And, and to think that the internet is over, I was just in Paris and, I, and a professor there said, the internet's done, it's over, we know what it is, time to regulate it. Said, no, no. Have faith in the future, which means have faith in our children and have faith in our grandchildren and have faith that they will figure it out. We figured out books. We figured out the telegraph, which was going to ruin society. We figured out radio and TV, which were going to ruin society, and TV went far, partway there. Right? We figured out comic books that didn't ruin society. We are smart. We figure this out. We're in a process of adapting to new reality and a process of negotiating our rules and our norms, and I have faith that we will figure it out. So chill. And thank you.